Welcome to Specific Love. With lumber prices as high as they are, I'm always looking out for discounted lumber, cheap lumber, or in my case, some free lumber. I recently had a family friend offer us a bunch of pallets because they just recently had a large shipment go to their house. I quickly took them up on this offer after looking at the pallets and knowing exactly what they were. Now I've done a bunch of research on pallets. I know what to look for and what to look out for. So if you're interested in that type of video, make a comment below and if I get a big enough response, I'll do a video just on that topic. Otherwise, we're going to be building this awesome porch swing with nothing but pallet wood. Let's begin. Now, if you're going to be working a lot with pallet wood, I strongly suggest starting to pick up some tools to help with the disassembly because, as you know, pallets can be a little bit challenging to take apart. Now, certain tools like this, this is a good pry bar that's specifically designed for pallets. Unfortunately, in my case, these pallets that I received are a little bit different design than your standard ones, which makes using this tool a little bit difficult. So, we're actually going to do this process a little bit old school. Now I'll flip this pallet over to make it a little bit easier to disassemble and I'm going to be using some scrap 2x4s, one on each end, bracing it on the, the inner board that's down here. And we're going to take another scrap piece of wood and a heavy duty hammer and we're just going to pound out each of these boards. Now when you're disassembling pallets, the nails can be the worst part of the whole disassembly process and they can be a pain to remove. That is, unless you have one of these. This right here is called an air locker. It's a great way to eject those nails really quickly, really easily. Let me show you this in action. Now, after taking apart a bunch of pallets, if I didn't have that little nail remover gun, I'm not sure if I'd want to do it again. I'll put a link to that in the description below, so make sure you check it out. Now, a number of these boards need to be sanded down, especially the ones that I've picked out to go in the seat position. Now, I'm going to run these through my drum sander to speed up this process, but you can always hand sand these. Even with a drum sander, sometimes you have to go back and do some additional sanding. Now that I have all these sanded off, I need to cut them to length. They're actually a little bit longer than I need from the factory. They're about 51 inches and I need 48, so let's take them over to the miter saw. Now since we're going to be sitting on these planks, I don't want these sharp edges to poke into anybody. So I'm going to take it over to my router table and we're going to just round over each of the edges. Next up, we're going to be staining the seat in aqua blue. So let's get started on that. Now after we stained some of the boards, we realized that having a solid blue seat would just be a little overwhelming to the eye. So we're actually going to alternate the colors with some weathered gray. Now we're going to start putting together the frame. I'm actually going to double up a lot of these pieces so that we can have a nice strong frame, especially since it's going to be hanging. So let's glue some of this together. Now if you're going to glue something together that goes outside, make sure you use type 3 glue. Now some of the boards we pulled off have a bunch of nail holes in them, but that's okay. I'm actually going to use this on the bottom side of the frame so they won't be seen anyway. Next up, we're going to be cutting down the frame for the seat. Now I'm going to be cutting this down to 18 and a half inches, but at the end here, I'm going to be making a 10 degree angle across. And that allowed me to angle everything when I attach the backrest. And since I'm already at the miter saw, I'm going to go ahead and cut out the frame for the back. These are going to be 24 inches, again with a 10 degree angle on one end. Now some of your pieces may have some glue squeeze out, probably a good idea to take a chisel and maybe even some sandpaper and to go over this so it doesn't create any discoloration. Now we're going to attach the seat frame pieces to the front lip that I have cut at 48 inches long and we just got to remember that these pieces that we cut at a 10 degree angle need to be sloping inward like so. We're going to use some two and a half inch screws to attach these. We're also going to pre-drill these so it's less likely for anything to crack. And for the center boards, we're going to measure these out at 16 inches and center these. Now we can pre-drill those holes as well. Now we've added a little bit of glue and we're going to screw them together. Now on the back here, I'm only going to add a single board. It's mainly meant to just help align the backrest 
and make sure everything's nice and straight and it doesn't wiggle. It's not going to need nearly as much strength as the front because you're not going to have as much weight on the back as you will right here on the front. Now that the bench of this swing is nearly complete, we're going to add the backrest. Remember, we previously cut these at 10 degrees. And when we align everything in position here, it should give a nice 10 degree slope right here for your seat. Now to keep the frame from moving around and make sure it's nice and flush with the bench it's sitting on, I'm adding a clamp, not real tight, just enough to keep it held down. Now it's time to put a beam across the top here, and I'm going to use a double in this situation because it's going to get probably a lot of abuse just from normal wear, and it's going to be in a weather, and you just want to make sure it's nice and strong and lasts a long time. But first I have to trim it down to the width of the top, which in my case is 45 inches. And just like everything else, we're going to glue and screw this in place. Next up, we want to attach the boards for the seat and the back, but first we need to pre-drill some holes. Now to make sure all the holes on the ends are in alignment, I made this temporary jig right here for my drill press. I'm just going to put it here, drill a hole, move it over, drill it, and that way all the holes can be in the same place. Now we're hanging the first board about a quarter inch off of the front here, so you don't hit your leg as much on this piece, and then we're going to space each additional board about a quarter inch each. And now for the center screws, I believe I'm just going to put one screw in each board. Now we're going to repeat the same process for the back. Alright, let's give this thing a test. Oh yeah. Feels good. Lean it back a little bit with the chain. This would be awesome. Now this is also a good spot to test out for armrests. Now everybody is a little bit different, so you can adjust and figure out the size you need just using some scrap wood. That right there could work, but feels a little high. And this feels like it might be just about right. Maybe a hair low. Let's see what that is. That is nine and a half inches. So I'm probably going to go with some 10 inch armrests. But we also have to take in consideration the height of the side of the swing and the thickness of the actual armrest. Take the armrest, set it next to the swing. And then this measurement here comes to two and a quarter. So the actual height of this column will be 12 and a quarter. Now you can put this armrest support about anywhere you want as long as it's near the front. I'm actually going to put it right about here just behind these front two boards so I can easily put some screws in and I don't have to worry about it hitting the screws that are in the front. Also, when you have the armrest up here, you have just a little bit of room for your hand to grip under it. Now to make the armrest, I just cut off a piece. It's about 21 inches long. It's going to sit nice and flush on the inside with the front, but back here, you'll notice there's a little bit of a gap, so we need to create a little spacer. Now the spacer we're going to be putting back here does not have to be very big. In fact, as long as it is about the thickness of the armrest, which should be fine. But we need to pause right here and take in consideration where we might mount the chain. And so since we want to mount one a little bit higher on a backrest, we actually should probably extend this piece up a little higher so that it is nice and thick so we want to attach that bolt for the chain we have a lot to bite into there are a number of ways you could actually attach the back here you could have a, a real long screw coming all the way through you could have a support piece underneath i'm just going to keep it simple and add a couple pocket screws right under here but before we install this i'm actually going to go over this with a round over bit just to make this a little bit easier on the hands Now to keep it from moving around while we're adding the screws, I just clamped it in place. And make sure you use the exterior blue screws when you do this. Then I'm adding two more screws straight through the top of the armrest and to the bottom supports. Then of course, just repeat everything on the other side. And there we have it. The sport swing is pretty much complete with a couple exceptions. One, it's gonna need an outer coating to protect it from the elements. I love using a spar urethane, but you can use whatever you'd like as long as it's made to go outside and that should help it last a lot longer, especially since this is a pine. 
Now, the second one is to have some mounting locations for your bolts. One, I'd strongly suggest putting it down here at the bottom of this armrest support. And the second one back here, where we put the little extension here for the back of the armrest. Both locations have four boards thick, and that should give plenty of strength for your bolts. Now, in the process of putting this together, my wife asked if I could turn this into a glider instead of a porch swing. So, I want you to be on the lookout for a future video where I turn this actually into a glider. With that said, I hope you enjoyed this video and this project, so get out in your shop and have fun building. A lot of pro products. Yeah, try it again. Wood, uh, little, 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 little. Try it again. Let me show you this thing in action. After we got started staying, after we got started thing, this be brought to you by my friends, ah, by my friendly friends, Pallet Wood. Maybe, uh, weather gray, dang, that was perfect too. All right, oh, I can't talk. Pretty brilliant, pretty brilliant.